possible to average a triple double in the NBA? Would you have thought that? I'd say, why not? Big baller on my way to a triple double. Westbrook's got his triple double. Triple double, triple double. What he's doing is just electrifying. He just attacks everybody. There's no player like myself. He's made the triple double look so easy. This shit ain't easy, though. I'll tell you that. History. Russell Westbrook has just surpassed Oscar Robertson. Normally, I don't. I pat myself on the back, but tonight I will. I won't stop until I can't play no more. Westbrook gives the Lakers a star-studded big three. LeBron, AD, and Westbrook have combined for 34 all-star selections. They would be the second team to have a trio with that many, along with the 2011 Celtics, who featured Shaq, Kevin Garnett, and Paul Pierce. It also gives the Lakers two of the best playmakers of all time. LeBron and Westbrook have combined for 283 career triple-doubles. Westbrook is the all-time leader in that category, while LeBron ranks fifth. Both players also have a scoring title and assist title under their belt. But then there's this question of how they'll fit, especially in terms of floor spacing. Westbrook shoots just over 30% from three in his career, something the Lakers ranked 21st in last season. But to be fair, LeBron won two titles with D. Wade, who shot worse than 30% from three in his career. The Nets remain the favorites to win the title next season, according to Caesars in Vegas. But the Lakers, not far behind. After L.A., it's the Bucks at plus 800, followed by Golden State. Now, it is great to be joined by our friend TNT's Kenny the Jet Smith. Kenny, how we doing? I'm doing great down here in Chapel Hill, as you see, at the Dean e. Smith Center. Uh, I'm here enjoying myself and uh, doing, having a good summer. Good. That's what we like to hear. Um, we got so much to talk to you about, but you know we want to get your reaction to the major news. Obviously, the Russell Westbrook teaming up with LeBron and AD in L.A. Your reaction? Well, I, I think, you know, we, we heard all the rumblings that they needed to add. They wanted to add another piece, uh, you know, the, the big three or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, Russell Westbrook, obviously, you know, what he does, not just on the um, scoring end, but in terms of the pace of the game. It allows LeBron to be a finisher a lot instead of always the facilitator. And uh, so, you know, running that break, you know, you have LeBron on the wing instead of with the ball a lot of times now. That's going to be a difficult situation for a lot of teams to handle. I feel you on that, Kenny. It's always good to see you, my brother. You know that. I, 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 feel, you, I, feel, you on, I feel you on that. Here's where my reservation lies as it pertains to winning a championship because I definitely think they'll be the, the final four in the NBA. But winning a championship – couple of things. Number one, that pace of play you just alluded to. LeBron James is phenomenal of a conditioned athlete as he is. He's no young spring chicken any longer. And so that pace of play, that's not necessarily a guarantee in my estimation. That's number one. And number two, their perimeter shooting. Because we all know that when you talk about beating a Golden State, when you talk about beating the Clippers, when you're talking about beating the Nets potentially in an NBA Finals, you got to be able to shoot the rock, not just from the perimeter, but from the free throw line. And as I pointed out early in the show, LeBron James shot 69% from the free throw line last year. Russell Westbrook shot 65%. Kyrie was at 92. James Harden's at 86. KD was at around 87, 88. Those things matter. What do you say to that? I'd say the one thing that, you know, for perimeter shooting, you know, I was I thought I was a really I was a good shooter at, or at, until I got to Houston. I became a great shooter because you go to Houston and you get an extra second when because they're double teaming great players. And so when you're when you're playing with a guy like LeBron and Russell and A.D., if you're a good shooter, you become great because now you, you're going to be left open. It was the first time in my life, Steven, and guys, I, I, I was left open. So there are certain guys who probably had never been left open that long that will have, you know, opportunities. If you think of guys like P.J. Tucker when he was in Houston and even this year, they get shots because and they get an extra second to think about it and to really set their feet. So that actually makes you a better shooter playing with those guys who are maybe a marginal guy who comes in and say he can knock down shots. Then all of a sudden he comes there and say, man, he's a prolific three point shooter. It's because you got extra time. Kenny, let's say they get two pure shooters to round out the starting five, right? Because they still got the sign and trade rights for um, Schroeder and they have Taylor Horton Tucker. They have some stuff that may not work on this team, but other teams might be interested in. I look at the Nets. 
The difference is offensively, all three of their big three are for their size among the greatest scorers ever from anywhere, right? That's not the Lakers. But if the Lakers round out the starting five with a couple of pure shooters, is that, the, is that enough or does the shooting need to be distributed better among the guys who are going to touch the ball as, as, you know, the most like Westbrook and LeBron and AD? Does that give the Nets an advantage if they should meet in the finals? Are we already negating the fact that the Milwaukee Bucks won the, the Yeah, the yeah, because they only won because the Nets got Are we hurt. not going to think Kenny. that they're going to be back anywhere? I, I just feel that, you know, there's a lot of things that you could say in terms of talent. If you read, look on paper, those two teams have, you know, some talent. But they're most talented roster assembled. However, like we said, they're not in there. This is not Russell Westbrook eight years ago. This is not LeBron eight years ago. This is not, you know, even – pre-injury for Kevin Durant. Like, you know, if Kevin Durant is in the Olympics eight, five years ago, they don't lose a game. Like, mm. they, he could take over all of those games. So this is not the same um, kind of guys. And, um, you know, youthfulness, energy, playing together, you, that means something. So I wouldn't just hand those two teams, the East and the West, at all. Um, I, I think that they're going to have to work for it. It's gonna. They have to stay injury free. They're gonna be playing that. Oh, that that um, saving him for this game and that gets you out of rhythm. And I thought that got the Lakers out of rhythm this year. And we'll see if it doesn't do it this next year. Russell Westbrook, Kenny Smith, fourth team in four years. Mm. Teammates: Kevin Durant, Reggie Jackson, Serge Ibaka, Victor Oladipo, Paul George, uh, James Harden again. Bradley Beal, no championship to show for it. And now he's got LeBron James and Anthony Davis as his teammate. At the start of this show, I talked about how because he's so phenomenal and because he's a surefire first ballot future Hall of Famer, all of those things taken into consideration, he will never be under more pressure than he's been, than he will be this year. He won't care, but that's the situation. Am I right or wrong about that? Well, it, you know, I don't think not having a championship uh, dampens your legacy, but it definitely adds to it. Like, it definitely adds to it. The reason I'm on TNT and sitting here with you at ESPN right now is because I won two championships. I have a perspective that's going to be different and that has a finality to it. So, yes, winning a championship of Russell Westbrook does it help his career? Yes. Does it dampen it if he doesn't? No, he's done enough individually. But it makes him, when you walk around with that championship, that C on your left shoulder, like that's a different perspective but Kenny, and a different thought process. Yeah, but I'm asking you, coming into this season, I don't know of anybody who will be under more pressure than him because of those Nets. things I outlined. What do you the say Brooklyn to that? Nets. Okay. I say the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets are because you, you you assemble this roster, then it wasn't healthy. You come back, you got to win it. You got to be in the finals. You got to be there because to me, then it's like, is this really what we should have done? And are we going to, you know, are these guys going to stay hurt? Are they going to be healthy enough? Are they going to be cohesive enough? And to me, the Brooklyn Nets is just as much pressure as Russell Westbrook and as a team they probably have more pressure than, than any team to win a I championship. That. Um, Kenny, Clippers president of basketball operations, Lawrence Frank, of course, said Kawhi, after having major surgery for the ACL tear, um, he wants to have Kawhi remain a Clipper a long time. Your reaction? I mean, you... you